testes. Last time I filmed this exact video, finished the whole thing, went to organize it in my folders, and the audio was totally f***ed up. Awesome. I'm working on getting like the lighting in this bedroom situated so I can film in here. I'm also kind of in the middle of remodeling the entire house, so it's not the cutest bedroom right now, but at least it feels a little more comfortable to sit here than in a studio. So today's video is kind of just all about this kind of crazy journey that I've had with this pregnancy. I touched on it in my pregnancy announcement video. There was kind of a little snippet about what had happened and I was just kind of like, what the hell? So I wanted to dive a little bit more into this because <laughs> I didn't even know any of this was a possibility and it happened to me, so chances are it's happened to plenty of you, or it could. So I wanted to talk about it just to kind of like make you guys aware of what happened so that you can do what you need to do for you should something like this happen or, you know, something of the sort. So I... It's crazy to it's crazy that the cat's out of the bag. It's crazy that I'm able to talk about being pregnant. It feels like a very long time that I've been keeping this a secret. So I was so excited to announce when I uploaded my announcement video. So that was really, really cool. And it's so cool to be able to say that I am pregnant and not have to like I kept like hiding things in videos. Like I would have like a Doppler over here on my bedside table and I'd have to hide it and like rewatch my Instagram stories and make sure there was like nothing in it that like gave it away. So I'm really happy to be in this safe zone of my pregnancy. Um, apparently it's after about 12 weeks. So yay, <laughs> pretty excited about that. I will say before we get into this video that I'm in no way speaking f like from a doctor standpoint or in place of your doctor. I'm just simply telling you what happened to me and what was told to me and my experience overall. So please always seek medical advice when you need it. Please don't pull advice and medical advice um, or anything of the sort out of this video. This is simply just my story. So, and I hope it helps anyone. That's really the main reason why I wanted to kind of talk more about it and dive into it. So, Let's get into it. I found out I was pregnant at about, I wanna say it was about five weeks, and I had a trip planned to Nashville with Nick, and we were getting my house ready as it is now on Airbnb and VRBO, and I was very excited. I was very excited, but because I had had and experienced a miscarriage a few months prior, I was scared. I was worried. Um, I. I almost was more worried than excited, to be honest with you. And that sucks, but that's just kind of sometimes how it affects people and I just couldn't help that. So I was worried and when I found that I was about eight weeks or when I did the math and I was like, okay, I'm like eight weeks now, I decided to make an appointment to go in for my first prenatal appointment and figure out if there was a heartbeat and if this was a viable pregnancy before I went to Nashville because you can do Nashville pregnant or you can do Nashville not pregnant. And I wanted to know. And having had a miscarriage, I was just dying to see a heartbeat or just know what was going on. So I planned that appointment for, I wanna say it was a few days before we went to Nashville. So I went in and it was called a viability appointment. And we, we went in and Nick met me there actually, and we saw a heartbeat and it was very exciting. I was just like so excited. Nick was very excited. We were just stoked. We were like, F yeah, like I'm doing Nashville pregnant. <laughs> you know, um, of course there was all these worries in the back of my mind going through a miscarriage. I was just worried. I was just worried. Every time I would pee, I would look down and make sure there was no blood or anything unusual. I mean, and that continued. Like I would take a flashlight to the toilet with me and that didn't stop until like a few weeks ago, to be honest. <laughs> so my neighbor is doing some yard work today. So if you hear that, that is uh, their gardeners or tree trimmers or something like that. So sorry for the noise. 
But okay, so I was a few days away from my first prenatal appointment because the last one I went to, she thought that I was six weeks, I was really actually eight weeks. But nonetheless, um, I was a few days away, so I was in Nashville, I was in a really great mood, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna film some content, I'm gonna like do my hair or something, and I was just feeling like, so good. I was like, hell yeah, I'm like, almost 10 weeks at this point, like doing well, I'm like I'm crushing life, like I don't even have any nausea or anything, like I'm good, like this is great, like my mom just visited me, she had just visited, we had a taco night, it was a great night. She left to drive back to where she lives, which was about six hours away, or is about six hours away. So she, after about, about I would say about three hours after she left, I was standing there styling my hair, and blood just started running down my leg. And this was like the traditional miscarriage scene in a movie. It was very much so like a gush of blood, and I ran to the toilet, and it just filled up with blood. And I even took a picture so that I could show Nick, my mom, the doctor, um, as gross as that is, I still have it on my phone. <laughs> so I just was, there is a giant praying mantis chilling on my screen. He's so cool looking, he's huge. Oh my gosh, he's like this big. That's so rad. Okay, anyways. Um, so I took photos and I was kind of like monitoring how much I was bleeding and you know a couple people very close to me that I talked to about it said hey you know I know people who have had bleeding like that um, when they're pregnant and you know you're probably everything's gonna be okay and I was just so upset you know um, first I was really sad and then I was just pissed I was like are you kidding me like not only is like a miscarriage like expensive if you do a DNC, but it is this praying mantis is so distracting. Um, it's also so emotionally difficult. Everyone handles it differently. And if you want to watch my video on my miscarriage, because maybe it's something you're going through, I will link it for you down below. But I was just upset. I was very, very upset. I called Nick crying. And I was like, I think I just had a miscarriage. And so I just, my mom turned around, came back, and I left for San Diego the next day. And I had my um, upcoming prenatal appointment. And I was just disappointed. Like, I felt like ugh, I have to walk in there again and just, like, see all these, like, beautiful pregnant women who have these perfectly round bellies. And, like, my body just isn't working the way that it's supposed to, you know? So I went into my doctor's appointment and I sat down and she came in and I told her everything that had happened. I was like, you know, I bled on and off for three to four hours and there was a tiny bit of spotting the next day. And like, thankfully I didn't have a bunch of bleeding going on when I was on the plane. I was super worried about being jammed in those like little tiny seats on, you know, in the middle aisle. I was in the middle of two seats on this plane. And I was like, gosh, am I just gonna be like bleeding or like sick or like passing bloody masses? Like, I don't, I didn't know what was gonna happen. So thankfully I didn't have to experience that. So I kind of told her what was going on. I didn't, I didn't show her the picture. <laughs> But I told her, I was like, you know, it kind of filled up with blood. After hearing all of this, she said, okay, like, yeah, it, it sounds like, you know, you had another miscarriage. And she does the transvaginal ultrasound and she's looking for a minute and she's like, so your sac is empty, you know, there's just nothing there. Uh, and she just kind of seemed a little unsure and just kind of like, why is there nothing there if you didn't pass any like, because I didn't really pass any like tissue. It was just like blood for the most part. So she was like, you know, uh, briefly kind of touched on like some DNC stuff again and then said, how about we have you come in in a week and we'll do an ultrasound to make sure like everything has cleared out like on its own. So we left and then Nick and I went to go get sushi and I was just sad, you know, I just, I felt embarrassed. I was sad. And I was like, I'm gonna get some sake at sushi. Like, I'm just like, I, do you want some sake? And he was like, no, 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 hold on. He was like, why don't you wait and wait till the ultrasound? I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, she didn't sound that sure about what she saw or what she said, you know? I'm like, what do you mean? That is not what I got out of that appointment. Like, 
What I heard was talking about DNC options. Your sack is empty. Let's check and see if everything's cleared in a week. But I said, I respected what he said. And I was like, all right, we'll just wait. Thinking in the back of my mind, this guy's crazy. Like what, like what part of that appointment? Like, did he not understand? Like, I'm super confused. So about a week goes by and I continue to not drink and, you know, respecting what Nick said and just pretending like I was pregnant in terms of like what I was eating and drinking. So I went to the ultrasound and it was a different lady this time and they were doing like an over the top stomach like ultrasound. I don't know what the technical term is for that, but I'm laying down and I, you know, kind of tell her what happened. I was like, yeah, I, you know, had a miscarriage like five, you know, four or five months ago and this is what happened this time and this is why I'm here. She wanted to make sure everything cleared out naturally and apparently this chick knew exactly what was going on. She's like, okay. So she puts a gel on my stomach and I'm just sitting there and there's this giant screen in front of me and I'm just kind of like looking around and I'm looking at the screen and she puts the thing on there and on the screen is like a full baby. Like I can see the nose, the lips, the hands, like everything. And I'm just staring at the screen and I'm like, what is that? And I'm just like, I feel like I was on like an episode of Punked. Like literally like when's Ashton Kutcher going to pop out of the closet? Like this is bizarre. It was so crazy because it literally looked like a computer generated graphic of like a, what an ultrasound is supposed to look like. The baby was so clear and she says, uh, so yeah, you're 10 weeks and three days pregnant. And I was just like, um, uh, and I have never been at a loss for words. I don't think in my entire life, like that's just not me. And I was at a loss for words. I was shocked. I didn't understand. Like my brain was just like, like, I don't know how to process this. So I'm like, I don't understand. Like she said, my sack was empty. How is there all of a sudden a baby in it? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. And she's like, well, and she does a little bit more looking and she's like, you do have an empty sack, but you also have a 10 week old baby in another one. And I was like, what? Like I'm getting excited because I was just like, what? The, what? Like I'm already at 10 weeks. Like, you know, it just felt crazy. It, like felt like I got there like that because I didn't think I was pregnant. So she proceeds to tell me about like what people, what, what people sometimes have, which is like a disappearing twin, which I guess is like pretty common. But she said that, and I don't know a whole lot about this. I probably should have done a little bit of research before I sat down to film. But what they told me was that a disappearing twin typically almost always is gone before you ever knew it was even there. Like it, like for instance, like you'll have a disappearing twin, it'll disappear like five, six weeks or whatever. Um, and you never even know that it's there. But the fact that I bled like a miscarriage and my sack was empty and it's still there. It's actually still there to this day. It's not growing, but it's still there. Makes them think that I was having twins and lost one. So I don't know if I will ever have a definitive answer on whether I in fact had a twin, but I believe in my heart that I did have twins and that I miscarried one of them. Um, and I'll never know if the heartbeat that I saw on the first viability appointment was this baby's or the one I lost. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just a very weird kind of tug of war feeling like emotionally about I have a healthy baby, but I also like lost one. So it's kind of a, it's, it's a, just a weird concept. And I actually haven't even seen my doctor yet. I've only seen, I don't know what, what they're, uh, called, but I've just seen kind of like the person you see before your doctor. So I, I'll have to hear more from the doctor about what they think happened, but that's what everyone that I spoke to at the hospital is like leaning towards and twins do run in my family. So it wouldn't be crazy, I guess. Um, but it's, yeah, I, the reason I, wanted to bring it up too, was because if 
you have been told that you had a miscarriage and you only get that one transvaginal ultrasound and they see an empty sac like they saw with me or not a heartbeat or something like that and you went and got a DNC and never got a second opinion, like thank goodness she called for another ultrasound because I didn't know that sacs could be in front of one another like that and only you could see one in an ultrasound. So had she not called for that other ultrasound, I would have gone and gotten a DNC because I didn't know any better. So the point is, if you are told that you have a miscarriage or had a miscarriage, get a second opinion. Ask to make sure you can go get an, another ultrasound to make sure that you did in fact have one. Or maybe you're gonna be in a situation like me where you're gonna show up and they're gonna tell you that you have a perfectly fine baby. So yeah, it was definitely like a roller coaster of emotions. After I left that appointment, I came home and we had some construction people here talking to Nick and I was like just so anxious for them to leave so I could tell him. And I, they finally left and I walked up to him and I was like, so I'm still pregnant. I'm 10 weeks pregnant in three days. And he's like, I know. And I was like, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you know that I don't know? Like, what do you mean you know? And he said, I kind of had a feeling. And I'm like, what do you mean? You didn't share that with me. And he's like, well, I told you that she didn't seem super sure about what she saw. And I was like, yeah, but like you didn't elaborate that you had like a feeling or something like that. So pretty crazy, but father's intuition, like I have no idea. Like he obviously is a firefighter paramedic and knows a lot about the human body. And he thought maybe he saw another sack behind that one. I don't, I don't, that's what he says, but he didn't tell me that at the time. He probably didn't want to like get my hopes up or anything like that, but what a crazy like twist of events in a crazy week. It was so emotional and I'm so happy that I still have a healthy baby. Um, very sad if I did in fact lose one, um, but I am very grateful to have a healthy baby. So that's my story. Um, I'm interested to know if this has happened to someone that you know or if it's happened to you. I would love to chat about it because I haven't talked to anyone that this has ever happened to, so I feel a little alone with it, but I'm dying to know if anyone can relate and like what happened and what your story is. So if you're willing to share down below in the comments, I would love that and I would love to check it out and read and um, talk with you guys about it because pretty crazy. So like I said, I would always recommend getting a second opinion after I just went through what I went through. Um, I'm really glad that she called for that other ultrasound or else I would have had a DNC and this baby would not be here right now. So um, pretty, pretty wild. Uh, and it makes me wonder why I didn't get a second ultrasound the last time I had a miscarriage. Was it twins again? Was this other sack behind the other one and we didn't know about it and we only saw the one? I, you wonder, you know? So, uh, better safe than sorry. But anyways, um, I would like to do a video kind of wrapping up my first trimester since I'm now in the beginning of my second trimester. So if you guys have any questions about that as well, I'll also post on my Instagram, but I'd love to hear what questions you have so I can hopefully answer those. And I'm gonna be looking for some um, maternity item recommendations as well as some newborn recommendations. So keep an eye out for all that on my social media, uh, probably on Instagram, possibly on the community tab here. Um, but also please give this video a thumbs up if you are stoked for all the baby content and uh, maternity pregnancy content. I'm pretty excited to get into it and it's just like, feel like it's like a new chapter of my life. So I'm pretty excited to like, I'm excited to do it and I'm excited to just be pregnant and I'm very grateful for, for that. So thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in, in the next video. Bye.